Hello, I'm Peter Bishop, Seagrow Australia B5 Panel Convener. In this technical seminar presentation, I will be reporting on the international and local activities of the Seagrow Australia B5 Panel over the last year. It is noted that a main requirement of protection is to detect and isolate faults, including those associated with transmission line lightning strikes. The scope of the B5 group concerns Protection, Automation and Control Systems, abbreviated to PACS. It considers the functional principles, design, applications and management in power systems. It also incorporates monitoring, recording and metering. It further relates to communication between devices and externally, plus interfaces to remote control. Power system and technology changes mean new protection challenges and focus areas for the B5 study committee. Particularly with distributed energy resources, efforts are required to further include distribution protection systems and end-to-end -end protection coordination. Many areas are around protecting renewables, ensuring compatibility and new communication systems. Two areas focus on developing and managing protections for where renewables mean low inertia and fault levels. There's also a focus on modeling protection so that system planners can check the response for changing systems. Web-based sessions replaced the in-person Paris International event this year. There were two protection paper presentation sessions on very relevant protection topics. They were human aspects in protection automation and control and communication network in protection automation and control experience and challenges. An Australian presentation was included with the subject title of common errors and traps in design, testing and commissioning of protection and control schemes. There was good attendance and a range of questions and answers followed sets of presentations. Some common themes and highlights from the first topic on human aspects in protection included the many international examples of human error incidents that considered aspects such as the categories and controls for prevention, the focus on standardization, complexity and training, Increased cybersecurity awareness becoming increasingly critical for protection engineers. Also, presentations looked at human operator interaction with protection systems. A particularly interesting aspect shown in one of the slides is the use of some unusual and non standard primary network configurations being banned from a network to minimize risk. Papers presented on the second topic on communication networks and PACs considered architecture and design aspects, testing and commissioning aspects, and feedback from real and trial installations. Some design themes that came across were that standardizing, separating, redundancy, use of new technology, and cybersecurity were important features in designing protection communication networks within a substation and between substations. Some feedback from the presentations relating to testing and commissioning was that simulation and traffic monitoring were important. An interesting aspect shown in two of the slides is a successful trial of 5G current differential protection scheme for distribution networks. Another slide shows a design including communication network monitoring features Several presenters stated their initial designs did not include monitoring, but after experience with values and problems, it highlighted that it would have been important to include them at the design outset. A number of papers covered communication aspects of process bus installations, and it showed that they were becoming more widely accepted. Public Study Committee B5 website was created late in 2019. It's a place for anyone interested to reference aspects relating to the B5 strategic plan, active working groups, events, and technical brochures. 
Segre Australia B5 panel membership has grown to 34 members. Despite the present global and national situation, the panel is progressing with activities, some in a, diff in a different way or in a different format. The panel representatives presently contribute to 15 working groups and convene one Green Book Task Force. A Green Book is a reference publication on a particularly important topic. Listed are some of the working group topics that I think are particularly relevant to Australia. The working group on frequency protection will consider challenges that include the effect of a larger proportion of wind and solar renewable generation. The working group on faster protection and automation systems is to consider fast protection aspects for bushfire mitigation. It is also noted that the B5 representative is liaising with another study committee working group on bushfires prevention to consider the wider protection aspects. The working group on protection requirements for inter-substation and wide area communication is looking at the requirements under the situation of increased inter-substation schemes due to increased new renewable generation and also a shift from the now obsolete communication technologies to newer technologies. I am also convening the study committee B5 Green Book titled IC61850 Principles and Applications to Electric Power Systems. This is a very relevant topic for digital substations. The Green Book will be a compact study to cover principles and practice for a wider wide audience. IC61850 is a standard for communication between devices. Rather than analog signals over wire, digital signals are sent generally using fiber. This enables the development for schemes for power system applications, including switchgear interlocking and bus bar protection. Over the year, a group of experts have been attending a number of web meetings and chapters have been forming. This year, the annual Seagray Australia B5 panel meeting was condensed and held online. Every second year, the panel organises the Southeast Asia Protection, Automation and Control Conference. During the panel meeting, we discussed planning for the 2021 conference and what adjustments might need to be made. With ongoing impacts, we are still working through timing and format for the event. Throughout the year, panel members have shared their experience on different protection topics using the web-based CGRE knowledge management systems. An example of a topic shared were considerations for implementing revenue metering digitally. Normally, at the annual panel meeting, there are a number of local presentations relating to aspects such as learnings from recent protection operations or application of new protection systems. This year, a local presentation is being given by webinar on PowerLink's Travelling Wave Fault Location Implementation Experience. Another activity was to support the Segre New Zealand National Committee in their request to form a complementary New Zealand B5 panel. After two formation meetings, there is active interest on sharing local issues from many New Zealand distribution and generator utilities, and systems are being set up. The output of a working group is a technical brochure. These can provide information on practices, guidelines, experiences and learnings. Four B5 technical brochures, particularly relevant to Australia and New Zealand, have been published in 2020. The brochure on improving metering systems for billing purposes in substations looks at global metering practices, regulations, restrictions and technologies available to enhance metering. The brochure on network protection performance audits looks at possibilities, advantages and requirements for using power system analysis software, setting databases and protection modelling to perform complete automatic protection coordination, particularly relevant for fast changing grids such as in Australia and New Zealand. 
the prediction and automation issues of islanded systems during system restoration and black start brochure looks at the international protection experience from black starts and restoration after unintentional islanding. This experience included certain Australia and New Zealand events. It particularly looks at protection aspects that can delay restoration and considers protection practices and requirements for a successful restoration. Learnings are listed. The cybersecurity requirements for PACS and resilience of PACS architectures brochure discusses issues, approaches, capabilities, techniques and solutions, particularly based on emerging threat landscape. In addition to referencing relevant standards and tools, it makes recommendations for improvements. It highlights the need for protection and automation engineers to be more aware of cybersecurity and their involvement. That concludes the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on the email address on the title slide. Thank you.